So here we have an untitled Fitch window. What we're going to do today is talk about how we can enter in an argument. That is, we can create our own argument or we can enter in uh, to Fitch an argument that's given to us rather than open up a pre-given uh, Fitch uh, file. And then we're also going to talk about how we can use the goal window to help us understand uh, what the whether or not we have derived our argument's uh, conclusion successfully given certain constraints. So let's suppose that I am given the following argument, and I'm going to use the buttons here rather than manually type in the exercise uh, simply because I, I often uh, make typos. So this will help me prevent that uh, from happening. Suppose that I'm told that A is small, or it's medium, or it's large. Suppose that I'm further told, and here I'm either using Command R or Control R, depending on which type of machine I'm using, Mac or non-Mac respectively, or I can go under Proof and add a, a step um, uh, or sorry, add a premise. Let's suppose uh, then again further I'm told that A is large and it's a cube. In other words, A is a large cube. Now let's suppose that my conclusion is that therefore A is neither small nor medium. So I'm going to go up to the goal menu, uh, drop down menu, and I'm going to enter a new goal. Notice when I click on enter new goal, my cursor is brought down to the goal window, and I'm just going to uh, assert my conclusion here. A is neither small nor medium. Now remember, because of the point of this um, explainer slash tutorial, uh, what I'm not going to do is talk about um, the strategy for the proof, in other words, why this strategy versus that strategy, and uh, why a certain inference is legitimate, right? I'm just going to um, uh, assume that you're good to go on that front. I may remind you of a couple of items, but otherwise um, I'm assuming a certain level of, of uh, competence with the uh, rules that we have at our disposal. So I'm going to go ahead and show the step numbers here. And I'm going to set up disjunction elimination. So um, I'm going to stop the video for a moment while I set up disjunction elimination. And then that way you don't have to deal with me walking through it. And then uh, we will work through the proof together. Okay, so I've set up the template or the blueprint, if you will, for uh, disjunction elimination, right? Uh, sentence one is a disjunction. Then we have right now from three to five, 6 to 8, 9 to 10, ending at 11, disjunction elimination. So I'm just going to uh, remind myself by way of, uh, or remind myself when I get there uh, of what I've done, namely eliminated, eliminated the disjunction. Okay, so let's work through this. Um, as a reminder, you can check your steps as you go and then you'll want to verify the proof at the end um, having using the goal window that is entering a new goal rather than simply completing your proof and checking individual steps will tell you whether or not you've uh, done the work correctly based on specific restrictions. Okay, so we're told uh, that A is small. Take a look at line two. Implicitly, there is a semantic contradiction, right? So let's eliminate the conjunction from line two and then assert the contradiction. Now remember, the contradiction here is not truth functional. How do we know this? Well, a couple ways. One is we can check the step and we get an X. Uh, another way is if we look at the uh, contradiction introduction rule, we see that it is a truth functional contradiction that contradiction intro uh, asserts. Here in this argument, we just have, uh, in the derivation I should say, we just have a contradiction based on 
the meanings of the predicates in relation to the object large. So we get a check mark, right? Now we move on to the next step. Uh, the move from five to six is a contradiction elimination. And this elimination you can uh, assert either by the rule, contradiction elimination, or by the anacon uh, mechanism in Fitch. Notice that here the contradiction elimination doesn't tell you what sort of contradiction we were dealing with, right? It's not telling us that we're dealing with a truth functional versus a semantic so a contradiction. So we can use that rule. Now we move on to our uh, next. So, so we're done with that subproof. Move on to the second in our successive subproof sequence. A is medium. Again, that um, sentence contradicts the sentence A is large, which we get from co uh, conjunction elimination at line two. We're going to assert the contradiction. This is, again, an anacon contradiction. We understand by the meanings of the predicates medium and large as applied to A, or as properties of the object A, uh, there is a contradiction. They can't both be maintained. And once again, a contradiction elimination at 10 from 9. Finally, if A is large, then it follows by, you guessed it, an anacon uh, move that A can't be either small or medium. And then we already set up, uh, or we already cited and justified uh, the final step, that is the conclusion of the argument by disjunction elimination. Now, we had a couple che check marks going, right? Um, remember, we can check each step as we go. Uh, and the nice thing is when we've got some sort of issue, here we've got the following issue. Uh, a star, a black star, tells us that the formula is not well formed. Fix that and we move on. Notice that we're told, yes, each inference that we've made is valid, which is to say each inference follows from the sentences that, or sentence that was cited. But notice when we click verify proof, we get an X. Why do we get a red X? Well, we're told when we click on the red X, you may not use the Anacon rule to satisfy this goal. Well, why not? Well, let's take a look at the uh, goal constraints. So we go up to goal, edit goal constraints, notice may use full anacon is not checked. So there are different um, uh, parameters, different restrictions you can set up under the edit goal constraints uh, in, sorry, the edit goal constraints box. Now with pre-given Tarski's, or sorry, with pre-given Fitch files, right, the, the, the goal constraints shouldn't be messed with, right? But if you're entering your own uh, argument, and you're told or you know what you want to be able to use, you can go into the goal constraints window and edit accordingly. So now once I've got may useful anacon, voila, I get a check mark. So remember, there's a difference between knowing that you've drawn valid inferences and knowing that you have worked within whatever the parameters are uh, for, that are given, right, for a given argument. Happy deriving!